I would like to congratulate the University of Science and Technology, Meghalaya, for undertaking such a mammoth task of organizing international online webinar where a galaxy of scholars have assembled. Before I start, I would like to pay my respect to Professor Mirdul Hajarika, Vice Chancellor, USTM, Professor Salindra Sharma from University of San Francisco, USA, Professor Raj Bahadur, member NTBNH, Government of India, New Delhi, Professor T.G. Sitaram, Director IIT Guwahati, my very dear friend, Professor Abdul Mateen, currently President Flair, and in past has been the chairperson of sociology department, AMU, and is currently visiting professor, USTM. Then Mahajibin Rahman, Deputy Director, ERDF, Guwahati, and last but not the least, Dr. Bahar Rissam Laskar, the dynamic convener of this international conference. Now, I think this conference is topical in the sense that it is talking of a very, very important issue. We are amidst the COVID-19 pandemic and USTM has decided to take it in a broader perspective and discuss and debate the issues of emergence and re-emergence of communicable diseases as a whole. And in that sense, I think this conference is a very, very remarkable conference because it is not going to talk only about COVID-19, but also going to talk about other emerging issues with respect to communicable diseases in general. Now, in my keynote address, I would like to talk on the history and emergence aspect of the communicable diseases in general. A very common explanation for such epidemics and pandemic in past has been that these epidemics have been caused because of sins of human beings, because of divine retribution. Now, this was challenged by science and we came to conclusions that no, it is the germs which caused these epidemics initially. While I agree with the scientific perspective, but I would like to revisit this divine retribution theory. And in the light of COVID-19 particularly, I think there is a need to revisit the divine retribution theory. I'm not here, not here to prove the existence of divine forces. But what I want to say is that COVID-19 and other such epidemics and disasters are basically consequences of human activities. Human activities have been giving rise to these troubles that we are facing because we have been cutting forests indiscriminately. We have been polluting air without thinking of any consequences. We have been polluting waters. Consequently, the ill effects of climate change resulting in melting of glaciers and population increase coupled with that, forcing us to experiment with new and new kind of foods are taking a toll on the normal life that the human beings have been living. Melting of glaciers not only is releasing the water that is preserved as ice, but also it is releasing those freezed microorganisms which were freezed long thousands and thousands of years ago. So what we are doing is that we are unleashing the army of microorganisms on human beings. And therefore, I would say that we are reaping, we are reaping what we, of our actions. And we have played very miserably with the nature for a long time. And that is what we are now facing the consequences. Coming to the communicable diseases, I would like to state that communicable diseases are basically diseases which are spread by infectious agents. And I would like to make a statement in this respect. And the statement is, 
एमरजेंस री एमरजेंस प्रिविलेंस एंड मोर्टिलिटी आउटकम्स ऑफ इन्फेक्शस डिजीजेस आर क्लोजली लिंक्ड टू लाइफ स्टाइल इकोनॉमी एंड मोबिलिटी कंडीशंस इन ह्यूमन सोसाइटी now before that i would like to briefly mention what are these infectious agents now covid 19 is one type of infectious agent but we have basically primarily four types and there are many more but four primarily classes of infectious agent which give rise to communicable diseases the first category is of helminths now helminths are multicellular organisms and we can also see them with our naked eyes and a very good example of helminths is ascaris lumbricoides or the worms intestinal worms intestinal worms are a very very interesting topic of study for social sciences i have myself written on cultural factors associated with intestinal worms now they are infectious agents they get into our body in uh, largely live in our intestine and then they come out in the form of feces and then again uh, if people are walking on the soil naked with naked foot it will again contaminate and they they will carry this ascaris with them now interestingly in india and the world we find there are two types of cultures these cultures are i have defined them as warm philic cultures and warm phobic cultures warm philic cultures are those cultures which desire worms in the body which consider that worms are an integral part of human body which also believe in the theory of assisted digestion by the worms and therefore warm philic cultures would like to river worms would like worms to remain in the body and would resist if the doctors advise that they want to kill these worms now in the himalayas many societies are there the singhalas are there in africa many societies are there which can be classified as worm phobic societies the other societies are worm phobic societies worm phobic societies are those which believe that worms are harmful to our body worm should not be part of our body and therefore they believe in cleaning the body of these worms and they go for all kinds of deworming treatments in order to get themselves rid of these worms then so worm these helminths are the first category of microorganisms that that affect us they are the first category of infectious agents that affects affect us and a part of communicable disease secondly we have protozoa these protozoa are microorganisms and therefore they are not visible to our eyes naked eyes they are also they are also unicellular they consist of one cell but large cell and i think plasmodium falciparum or malaria malaria germ is an example of protozoa and in order to see these germs we need the help of simple microscope the third category of infectious agents are bacteria and bacteria is also are unicellular organisms but they are smaller in size than the protozoa and therefore we need the help of special microscopes to see these microbes called bacteria and a good example of these bacterium uh, infectious agent could be vibrio cholera which is the cholera uh, microorganisms finally we have uh, the category called virus and virus are uh, without cells they are basically proteins and they are very very tiny and for them we need the help of very very special microscope because they are in size much much smaller tiny than the bacteria and covid-19 is a good example of such organisms on a lighter note what is common between corona covid-19 virus and eggplant or brinjal i think they are both similar because 
they both contain crown so brinjal is a vegetable with a crown similarly covid 19 is a virus with a crown corona means crown having started with this kind of an introduction my main task is to explore the history of human evolution and to examine the issue of emergence and reemergence of infectious agent or agents which lead to communicable diseases as we all know that in the beginning the initial stage of human uh, evolution has been the stage of hunting and scavenging in fact we became hunter later on if we go by the evidences that are available to us initially we were scavengers and our existence was something similar to the primates of the world and therefore we were coming in contact with animals now what was important at that stage of human evolution was that we were always together in very very small groups even if you look at the hunter gatherers contemporary hunter gatherers then they live in we know that they live in band existence a group of 20 25 at the most it may go to 30 and can you know group can increase and decrease but it is never a large group because it is not producing any food it is not storing any food therefore it has to go for food every day it has to arrange for its food every day and therefore such societies or such a uh, uh, subsistence level of existence or such a lifestyle would entail that we are moving from one place to another another place now in such a situation as far as the communicable diseases are concerned human being had all the chances of uh, getting them transferred from the animals that they are eating or from the animals they are able to kill because most of the infectious agents except for one or two have come from vertebrates they have come from vertebrates and among the vertebrates they have come from the mammals and among the mammals 20% of the infectious agents to human beings are coming from very our very very close ancestors the primates which includes the apes the monkeys and the prosimians so they are the ones who have contributed to 20% of the infectious agent load on human beings but most of the infectious disease load has come to us from animals except for few which have come from the birds so in that stage when we were scavengers or when we were hunter gatherers what was important that we were in very very small groups so even if and they were they were you know scattered around so very rarely people may be assembling together now in such a style of living or such a lifestyle there is of course a chance of animals transmitting infectious agents to human beings but the human beings were not able to further transmit it to other human beings because they were having existence in small bands so even if it is a very very deadly infectious agent suppose it kills the entire band but still it will not spread to others so this is how i think the society in the beginning when we were hunter gatherers it sustained itself and it survived and therefore i think we lived for a long time without this epidemic and pandemic conditions because the conditions were not conducive for any kind of epidemic or pandemic now we then came in closer association with animals now so far the animal association animal human association was accidental but then i think we started emulating animal behavior and we still have many societies which are in in uh, in of course in india we have got in the northeast that they are raising mithuns who are in the forest but a good example of the societies could be the the siberians where they 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 go after the herds of reindeer so they don't domesticate reindeer but they follow the herd of reindeer from place to place and then they they have so this kind of an arrangement human being must have come along with what is called as 
big game hunting that human makes. Now, this is a different. Con this was a different condition of lifestyle. These are different conditions where human beings probably has a longer contact, and also they were able to sustain larger groups than the groups which were sustained in scavenging and hunting gathering existence. So, therefore, the activities of infectious agent trans transfer from animal to human definitely must have increased during the during a period when human were human beings were more in touch with animals by means of following the herds or by means of killing the large big game for hunting now we came to another very very drastically different stage of of subsistence which is called as advent of agriculture now advent of agriculture meant that human beings and animals and the agricultural fields there is a kind of symbiotic relationship that was established the manure from the animals was going to fields and fields were giving rise to crops and grains and other kinds of vegetation food and animals were being used of course for their meat for their hide for their wool and also possibly later on for the milk now this kind of a situation this kind of a lifestyle this kind of economy can sustain larger groups and it, if it can sustain larger group then i think there was a dramatic change as far as the infectious diseases or communicable diseases are concerned i think many of the communicable diseases that are very dreaded they came after human being started living in sedentary lifestyle you have hookworm ascaris that i talked to you about it can only come in an agriculture society malaria it can only come in an agriculture society so there are many possibilities of many new infectious agents coming into fore because of sedentary living so that was that was another stage now when when we grew when we developed and when we started having larger civilizations indulged in in battles now this is a different kind of a scenario now we had what is called as uh, battle uh, etiology is coming into picture as for the spread of these uh, infectious agent is concerned we have many examples in the bcs in also early 80s that many of the battles which led to spread of plague especially bubonic plague or smallpox and decimated many large amount of populations in a very very short spell of time in 4th century it happens and in in pre uh, you know bc also it has happened there was another one which occurred in what is today called as istanbul and it actually led to the uh, you know the collapse of the whole empire so what i'm saying what i'm trying to say is that you had that battle etiology because the warring communities were spreading infectious agents from one community to other community it was going then another causative agent primarily causative agent for these epidemics and pandemics in the 80s were the trade especially trade route and if we go for 14th century black death uh, that plague that occurred it started from china through silk route it went to venice and from venice it went to it went to europe and it is said that nearly 60% of the population of europe was wiped out because of this 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 plague so therefore that was what is called as trade etiology and then we have a good example of last century that is 20th century beginning of 20th century influenza 1918 influenza that happened and that i would like to say that it was of course the etiology was battle etiology but i think it was also colonial etiology that uh, played a very important role in the spread of this it went to the ruling empires it went to the colonies and also then from colonies through armies it spread from one place to another place so that is another instance where infectious agent is spread now what is happening is that as i said mobility factors are playing a very very important role so far because armies are moving because ships were moving from one place to another place so the number of people who were getting infected was proportionately increasing to a great extent now we come to the present covid 19 pandemic now this covid 19 pandemic 
is also very, very special. This COVID-19 pandemic, there are two things which has led to sudden spread. So if it would take one year at the time of, uh, you know, last century uh, influenza to move from one place to another place. In fact, it took nearly 40 years for the Black Death Plague from uh, reaching from China to, to Europe. But in case of COVID-19, it has spread in 14 days, in four days, in one month. It has spread everywhere. So I have, I think it is because of two factors that it has spread very, very fast and it has covered the entire world. And the etiology, I would like to name the etiology as aviation etiology. It is the fast moving, it is the fast moving world where the, the air travel has become very, very convenient. And within, within one day, within a few hours, you can cross continents. I think this has coupled with, I think, the trade that China had become the master of trade. And I think every country of the world was dependent on China for goods, for electronic goods, for other goods, for mobile phones and all kinds of sundry things, India included, America included, Europe included. So I think this, this trade and aviation, aviational factors have played a very, very important role in spreading of this COVID-19. So what I'm trying to say is ultimately what I'm trying to say and what is the significance of this particular, there are two significance that this particular conference has. Number one, human beings will have to pause and think in which direction we are going. Are we really on the right direction? Are we playing, are we overplaying with our natural resources? Are we misbehaving with our nature? Do we need to correct our relations with nature? Do we need to correct our relations with forests, with wild animals, with the food that we eat, with the air that we breathe, with the water that we drink? Do we need to redefine our relations? I think the time has come when we need to redefine our relations. And secondly, I think this is a time when the importance of social science is becoming very, very crucial to the world. COVID-19 is a disease which is basically manageable, preventable by social science interventions. So social science, social scientists need to take their role very, very seriously. And we have to sit together, we have to discuss, we have to debate, we have to un understand or unmask the intricacies of human behavior. We have to make strategies, how we can initiate behavior change, how can we change habits of the people, how can we intervene so that people are able to maintain social distance. People are able to wear masks, which is required. So people are able to save themselves from the onslaught of this particular virus. And this is going to be needed, not only today, but also in future calamities. Now, I would like to thank the organizers that they gave me the platform to express my views, but I think there are many, many important papers that are going to be read in this particular international conference. And I've gone through many of the paper titles. They are very, very exciting. And I think the outcome of this conference should be in the form of either publications or online publications. Every idea that is brought forth in this conference must be debated, discussed, and taken to its logical conclusions. I would like to thank the organizers once again for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much.